Hi there, I'm Karen Botha. I'm the author of the Commitment series, which is a gay romance series. Um, it's a series of six books, and book four, Ignition, um, is out today. Yay! <laughs> so what I thought I would do is give you a quick read from it. So my books are meant to be really quick and simple to read. It, they're escapism from real life. You know, we, we're, we're not trying to write literature here. What we're trying to do is just give people something that they can pick up, escape from life from for a few minutes, and then put down and something's happened in that time. It moves that quickly. Um, what I have succeeded in doing is, by showing you the front of the book, <laughs> I've lost the space that I was going to read from. So let me just find that for you. Two seconds. What's happening is Elliot and Kyle um, are living separately at the minute because they're starting up a business. And so what this is, is kind of the point of miscommunication where everyone's doing their own thing, everyone's busy and they just don't have time to communicate properly. And it's actually about the importance of communication between couples because, you know, it's not always as simple as we first think to make a long distance relationship work. And this is something that I've got experience from myself, from um, living apart from my husband for a little while. So uh, there's a lot of this in here, which is uh, based on truth. I'll find it and I'll be back. Resume button. Here we go, I'm back, I've found it. So this is where Kyle goes off to a rugby match with a new friend that he's made. Um, this is just where they're at the match. The crowd is a life of its own, moving like a shoal of fish, a mingle of vibrant colours shimmering under the late winter sun. I haven't been to a rugby match in years. I used to play a lot as a child, but never seriously. It was fun for me to cream up and down the pitch, and I've never lost the feeling that I can play better than any professional when I watch the matches on TV, even though I'm well past my prime. A raucous cheer radiates from a corner. I glance over unconcerned and spy a Guinness swirling bunch of local supporters jeering at a furry mascot. Florian has nipped to the toilet, so I'm just standing back, soaking in the atmosphere. There's something about being in a stadium. It diffuses goodwill out into the atmosphere like no other platform. And for me, growing ever, ever more used to being in the spotlight, it's nice to just disappear into a crowd. It's like the old days before PR took a stranglehold on our lives. With Florian, I'm able to just hang around in a packed stadium and everyone passes me by without a second glance. In fact, with Elliot, I wouldn't even be able to attend this game. His security detail would be off the scale. Cheers, buddy. Florian appears from the bathroom and grabs his plastic cup of lager from my one hand. We stride easily together, dodging smiling faces travelling toward us with, until we find our entry gate. These are good tickets, man, I explain. I thought, with us buying them last minute, we'd be stuck on the top tier, able to see way less than we could on TV. Here, more for the atmosphere than the match. Yeah, we were lucky with these. Some of us done as proud. Indeed, I survey the pitch. We're almost on the halfway line, giving us an equidistant view of both sides, and we're right behind the TV commentators. We couldn't ask for a better position. Ten minutes later, the hooter sounds and the game is underway. My heart actually races with anticipation. It's not like either of these teams are ones that I support, but something about a stadium crowned and a live match makes my soul sore. This is just what I needed to break the monotony of a weekend to learn. It seems like only two minutes later and the horn sounds again, signalling half time. I can't believe that half the match is already over. Hell of a game, though. As we head off to the bar for our giant cups to be refilled, I proceed to fill Florian in on how I would have run the team. And had I been in charge today, Florian corrects me where he thinks I'm a total idiot. To be continued, I say, pointing my index finger while watching the opposing side kick the ball off from the halfway line to signal the start of the second half. Florian waves a beer. He's stashed under his flip down seat at me and we're once again engrossed in grown men crashing into one another for the sake of planting a funny shaped ball over a line. So that's one chapter, that's how quick it is to read the book. The, um, well, 
I'm not going to give away too much, but that was a bit of a transition um, chapter. So you can imagine the almighty ruckus that could go on with Kyle seated behind the TV screens with his new friend. And I don't know, is Elliot watching on TV? <laughs> I'll leave that with you.